My name is Nathaniel Dodson, and today I want to show you how to smooth skin in Photoshop without blurring it, without losing detail, uh, and just getting really, really nice results heading in the direction, but not really the hyper-realism of a lot of the really extreme beauty retouching you see, but stuff so you can get rid of blemishes without just saying Gaussian blur, paste it all over the skin, and be done with it. We're going to talk all about that today in this Photoshop tutorial. Let's get going right now. All right, so here we are in Photoshop, and I've got this photo from a commercial shoot that I did almost 10 years ago now. Uh, but it's good, just a good example of her face. She's got like some pimples, you know, just sweat pimply stuff, maybe a little blemish on her chin, stuff that the brand maybe looks at and says, hey, can we clean this up? We don't want it to look like a beauty retouch image. Um, eh, how can we clean this up without just blasting her skin completely? I got a couple tips for you. The number one thing is when you're doing retouching like this, zoom in a lot. When you zoom out, or when you look at an image overall, instead of zooming way in on the details, you tend to just think, oh, I can paint over all this stuff and just sort of blend it all together. But the word blending usually means mixing pixels, which with a sharp image is going to mean blurring stuff. You just don't want to do that. It's just, you're never going to get as good a result. So zooming in and just knowing I have to attack each little area of the face uh, separately. That's first and foremost. Next up, I'm going to create a new layer here because we're going to begin using uh, the healing brush. I like to use the healing brush, healing brush, not the spot healing brush, but the healing brush. And I like to say, hey, sample current and below. So I'm working up on a blank layer, working on destructively. But here's the important stuff. You want to make sure that you have your hardness set to 100%. You don't want blurring on this brush. If you soften the edges of the brush, you're introducing blur. Also, I like to keep the diffusion as low as possible. The higher the diffusion, the more blending there is, and again, the more likelihood of introducing uh, excessive blur there is going to be. So then at this point, we would go over the face by simply Alt or Option clicking and painting over blemishes. I can come down here and just paint this away, paint this away. You want to keep tabs on your brush size as well. Don't make the brush unnecessarily large. Just keep it as kind of small as you can possibly keep it. And another little trick is sample from areas that have similar texture. So if I'm looking to clean up these couple marks here, I'm not going to sample from the blurry texture over here because when I do that, you can see we've got this just blurry chunk of whatever that is appearing on her skin. It looks really bad. So you want to really be cognizant of, all right, I need to sample from areas that have very similar texture and just continuously resample. One finger should always be right there on that alter option button because you're going to be clicking it and clicking it and clicking it. Uh, it's kind of till the cows come home. So we're going to go through here and just get rid of some of these blemishes. And what I think I'm going to do here is probably speed the video up and you can just watch me knock out these blemishes, just zooming way in and working on them one by one. Um, one real quick thing that I do like to do is when I'm removing, you know, long strands of hair or something like that, just do it a little tiny bit at a time. You may think, oh, I can grab it and just knock it out in one big sweep of the brush. It, it just works better and it blends better with the skin if you just do it a little tiny bit at a time and just kind of, you know, wicky, wicky, wicky it right away. And next thing you know, you've got the hair gone and you don't have this big weird bit of texture that's missing from her forehead or eyebrow or something like that. All right, and there's what we have for our first pass. I can shut off the healing and I can turn it back on. You can see we just clean everything up. Uh, down here for the more blurred parts of her body, her shoulders, or arms, uh, this part you could just make the brush larger and just dab up a couple. You know, there are just a couple spots, this little mosquito bite or whatever it is down here. Clean up a few things like that. Um, but, you know, the majority of the focus obviously is on her face. So the, the zoom in a lot. Use hard edges, reduce diffusion when you're using the healing brush, um, and make sure you sample from areas that have similar texture. Now, one other thing we can do, and this, I uh, warn you, will introduce a tiny bit of blur, uh, but it's something that I know some people like to do, is sort of flatten the tones on her face a little bit. And we would do that by creating a new layer, and we would just call this layer Colors. And what we can do is use the brush tool, just a large brush. We reduce the opacity of the brush down to like 10% or so and uh, make it smaller, smaller, smaller. So I'm going to just use my square bracket keys and then hold down your alter option key and sample like sample this dark color and then paint some of the dark next to that dark and then sample the light, the lighter area that you just painted and paint some of that lighter area over the dark area and then sample some of the lightest next to that and paint it onto that darker and then sample the darker and paint it onto the lighter and basically you're just helping to bring all the tones on the face closer together by doing this. You're just sampling sort of neighboring colors and forcing them, not really forcing them, but just painting them in so they play nicer together uh, and just help flatten out some of the extremities uh, that you'll see here 
uh, across a face, especially a face that we lit kind of the way that we lit this one, where we're kind of using, uh, not really kind of using, we were using uh, slightly harsher light, especially here on the backside uh, than I probably should have been. And I know we had a softbox on that light, but I, I think I just had it too far away from the subject. So there's before, there's after. You just kind of s almost smooth the skin that way. I'm seeing this, this sort of natural blemish here where there's almost an indent on her face. Sometimes that might bug some people. So this would be another thing where I would just zoom in and just get rid of the lighter the lighter part of that. And by getting rid of the lighter part of it, you make it look like the whole blemish disappears. Now going back to the colors thing, uh, when you do this, obviously you can see it does look like a slight blur has been added to the skin. A way to back that off and help sort of sink the color into the skin is to reveal shadows and highlights a little bit. And we can do that using the blend if slider. So double click on that colors layer. This is gonna bring up a layer style. Hold down alter option for the underlying layer. We're gonna split the white handle and we're gonna drag this back just to pull those highlights back into place. See how it just intensifies the highlights a little bit? And we're going to split the shadow and we're going to pull some of the shadows back into play as well. Just a little bit. We'll hit OK. So now our before and after, we have what looks like a lot less blur, but we still have the flattening effect of the color. So that can be a nice little thing you do. Now, in order to actually add texture to the skin, if you're just losing texture or you think you need more texture than you've got, we can do that as well. We create a new layer. I'm going to call this uh, text for texture. And we go edit. We go fill and I choose 50% gray. And with my foreground and background colors, I want them to be black and white. So hit the letter D and then go filter noise, add noise. And you just want to add a bunch of noise. I mean, it can be as much as you want. Maybe we'll go like 15 here. And I'm going to go, well, not as much as you want, but a decent amount you can add. Then we'll go filter, stylize, and choose emboss. Now, the lighting in this photo is actually kind of coming from this top left angle. Uh, so we could do that. Or maybe actually, maybe I think the, the fill light here that's hitting her face is more up in this direction coming down. So let's actually go with like an angle of 55 degrees, a height of two pixels, and an amount of 100. And if we zoom way in, what we've got is what amounts to something that looks kind of like skin texture. But we make it actually look like skin texture by setting it to the overlay blend mode. Now it's on her skin, obviously way too strong. And we hold down alter option and add a layer mask, which is going to give us a filled layer mask. Oh, make sure we get the filled layer mask. And I'm going to zoom out. And now we take a big soft edge brush and opacity of 10. We make sure our foreground color is white and we just begin painting in texture wherever we want it to be. So you can go over her face and say, you know, I need a little more texture here in the shadow, down here in the cheeks, uh, maybe just above the lip there on the far side of her uh, of her face over there on the, the other side of her nostrils. And when you zoom in, you may look at it and say, you know what, too much texture. But that's the beauty of our layer mask. We can just simply paint with black and paint away and blend the texture in uh, so it doesn't look like stucco on her cheek, but rather it looks like a proper a bit of skin texture. So you would go over down here, there's too much texture. Uh, but down here around on the cheek, it's kind of just the perfect amount. It looks It looks right. So that's, that's one of the things I like to do. And something else that I, I also have just recently started doing, let me add a little more texture in through there, underneath her eye. And then almost always I'm adding the texture and then immediately painting it away at least a little bit um, just to see what it looks like. So we add a little bit of texture that way. And another thing that I found can be kind of cool, and this is brand new to Photoshop, merge all your layers to a new layer, command shift option E, that's control shift alt E, and we'll call this text two. And I'm gonna right click on this and convert it to a smart object. And then we are simply going to go filter when the smart object gets created, that is. And we will go filter and choose camera raw filter. And we've got this new slider here in the camera raw filter, texture. So I'm going to zoom in on her face and just look, because remember, we, we've copied up kind of the subtle texture that we just created, and we'll just boost texture way up uh, and just keep an eye on it. And when we've got some, probably overkill, we'll hit OK. And the beautiful thing about the smart filters here, we just added the camera raw filter to a smart object, is we have the layer mask associated with it. So select the layer mask, hit Command or Control I to just get rid of it, and then zoom in on the skin, again, using a very, very faint 20 opacity, 30 opacity brush. Just paint texture in where you think there ought to be more texture. So you kind of, kind of blend your textures together as well, um, just to keep it from looking too digital and too, uh, too alike. And again, get close when you're doing this as well. So you can really see how the textures are interacting with one another, where maybe you need a little bit more texture and where you need to take away a little texture. So it's just a labor of love and you'll go through and create the texture and build it out on your face uh, just the way that it needs to be.
And those are the couple tips that I, I, I can share with you in terms of taking an image from what we've got down here. Let me zoom in on her face. Uh, taking an image from what we've got down here where she has the blemishes to getting rid of the blemishes and maintaining as much detail as we can in the skin while really making the skin look like we smoothed it a lot. And it looks like that because we went in and did that very fine blemish removal and then we added some texture back. We did do some leveling with the colors. If I shut off the texture layer, we did do some leveling with the colors as well. Um, but yeah, those are some of the techniques that I like to use when I'm working on my own images and I hope you found them helpful. Well, that's it for this one, folks. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to the channel and tick on that little notification bell because notifications are cool. Sometimes when they're from YouTube or from this channel, they're really cool. Now, if you did enjoy this video, also check out the video that's appearing on screen right now. It's all about uh, hyper sharpening images in Photoshop using some tricks of the trade. I think you're really going to like it, especially if you're a photographer. I think you'll find it pretty useful. And uh, just a reminder that I love all the people, especially those of you that watch this video all the way till the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, .vid .com. I'll catch you in the next one.